And so the Human Microbiome Project has been so important because they developed a genetic testing to be able to look at what microbes are present in the gut in what numbers, what part of the gut, and what their functions are without them actually being alive. Um, and that's been a huge, huge advancement over the last seven to ten years that's really uh, allowed us to understand the gut much more. So we know at least a thousandfold more about the gut in the last three to five years than we did the hundred years prior to this. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge... That's crazy. Yeah, it's hugely. You know, and as a microbiologist, I love it because to me bacteria are everything and uh, and and you know and I've studied bacteria quite a bit and finally bacteria is getting its heyday you know it's getting its its moment in the sun people are really starting to understand how important the bacteria that live in and on us are because of new advancement and and so the human microbiome project the moment it started um, I was a big uh, you know follower of all the research coming out of it uh, I've taken a couple of the postgraduate courses uh, out of Colorado State University and all that on the microbiome itself to keep up with the latest studies and you know and I focused my work uh, in nutritional field over the last few years in really understanding the microbiome the new understanding of microbiome and then developing nutritional therapies that fit the new mold um, and that really, and we're starting to see tremendous benefits from being able to do that. You know, so yeah, it's, it's, it seems like every week there's a new big article that gets come, comes out, even in mainstream media now, that, you know, yeah. microbiome may be affiliated with depression, maybe affiliated with heart disease, maybe affiliated yeah. with, and it's like each week there's a new thing. Um, it's, it's fascinating. The amount of work that's coming out uh, and the connections we see, we would have never thought of. You know, we never knew that we produce more serotonin in the gut than we do in our brain. You know, and so happiness is, in a lot of ways, controlled by the gut and the microbes in the gut rather than your brain. Um, and so it's, a, it's, it's quite fascinating, and it's, it's probably going to be one of the most important fields of study moving forward in the next 15 years. Now, we had, 20 years ago, we had the Human Genome Project. You know, and the Human Genome Project was incredibly important to studying and understanding what human genes exist, what they did, how they control the body and all that. But one of the things they're starting to understand with the human genome is that you may have a gene for something, but the gene has to still be turned on and off. You know, so what controls the turning on and off of genetics? That's the that's a, even more important than what genetics you actually hold. And and now we're starting to see that the microbial community actually plays a big role in that. Um, and so you know we're really kind of bringing it all together to understand how we actually function. You're referring to epigenetics. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. talk about that uh, in one of the earlier units. They'll have gotten a little brief overview of epigenetics and, and you know all the different factors that can play a role in, in gene expression. And I've I've read some. Um, you know, I'm not overly educated on it, but I've read some about the interaction between bacteria DNA and our own DNA, or yeah. bacterial almost teaching our cells how to work properly. Is that pretty accurate? Absolutely. So you know the human. Uh, here's an interesting fact. The, the Human Genome Project identified that we had about 25,000 genes in the human genome, right? Prior to actually sequencing the entire human genome, it was estimated that we'd probably have somewhere in the realm of 130,000 genes, just looking at the number of biological functions that we can carry out. Um, and so when we finally sequenced the human genome and we looked at, well, there's only 25,000 genes, that left a huge question, well, how do we perform the rest of our functions? We don't have enough genes to actually do all the things that we can do. And so now with the Human Microbiome Project, they're starting to understand that there is almost 300 times more microbial DNA in our body than our own DNA. And our bodies and our cells can actually use uh, genes from bacteria that we take up and we actually create proteins from. And the, and the microbial DNA, the, the, the environment of DNA within our gut that, that is uh, controlled by the microbiome is far vast than our own genome. Um, so both the microbes turn on and off our genes. They supplement our genes by giving us DNA that we use. They, um, they actually produce metabolites and things like that that affect how our body uh, you know, replicates our genetics and turns on and off genes as well. So um, we now are getting a better understanding of these guys actually play a tremendous role in what we can actually do. You know, and, wow. and, it yeah. sounds almost like we should stop referring to us and them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a joint effort. When I I did a attended a symposium last year on on small intestine bacterial overgrowth put on by uh, Dr. Seebecker and and Pimentel from Cedar Sinai in L.A. and they talked. Okay. 
Uh, Dr. Pimentel came on stage right at the beginning and said, the first thing I want to get across is that it's very possible that human beings have evolved solely as a vehicle for bacteria. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that could be, that changes your perspective a lot when you think of it that way. You know, yeah, it's funny because we, we think of ourselves as such high order creatures, right? We're very cognizant, we've got a lot of cognitive abilities, and um, but all of that, our brain, as powerful as it is, is so easily controlled by the millions of, by the trillions of microbes that are in our gut. There's a great article that came out, uh, I think sometime last year, it's called, the title of the article is, My Bacteria Made Me Eat the Cupcake. <laughs> you know? I'm and writing that down. Fascinating, yeah, it's a fascinating article because it really goes into how the microbes within your gut create cravings for you. And you know, most of us, we, we it's hard to fight the cravings. So as smart and cognitive as we are, our microbes can make us go to the store and buy a cupcake if that's what they feel like doing.